Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM19 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's Season 7, Episode 3, and today it's first v second in the Championship as we look to cling on to a top two place after our brilliant start to the season has started to fade. But today we've got Blackburn, they're the outright promotion favourites, favourites for the title in the league, and we've just got to try and hold on to stop them and Watford nicking a top two place off us. So obviously the most important thing since you were last with me are all the games that we've played off camera, so let's go and have a look at them. You were with me for that Sunderland performance where things went really well, and they continued for a couple of games after that, but you can see it's all started to fade since then. So our way to Crystal Palace, we nicked a 1-0 win, a Coman pen penalty earlier in the second half we really dominated this game and defended well it was a really good result and performance we then won 3-1 at home to promotion rivals Watford Burton, Coleman and Taylor with the goals Taylor Fayou put Watford 1-0 up but we were brilliant from that point onwards we then lost narrowly at home to Everton of the Premier League in the Carabao Cup third round Kasper Dolberg the enigma with two goals in that one not developed quite as well as usual obviously he's a wonder kid in game he's become a model citizen in terms terms of personality but he's not really developed in terms of attributes just because he's had so many injuries he is injury prone which is always the bad point from him not to mention he's been at Everton for over three seasons now and has only played 82 league games which shows just how many injuries and struggles he's had but still a good player and put us to the sword in that one we then drew two all away at Oxford who are expected to be right down there this year. Mark Jones scored a brace against us. Not sure what he's like. He's a striker who can't finish. So that's disappointing. But again, physicality is so strong in this game. Young striker Jack Rooney got a goal for us in that one. And then Tapia from the penalty spot, the holding midfielder, got the equaliser for us late on. We then won 2-0 at home to Bristol City at the start of the month, where we thought things might be going back to normal. Rooney again with a goal, followed by an OG, which got us the 2-0 comfortable win. But then away to Aston Villa, we lost 3-2. A 94th minute winner, a sucker punch for us. Jack Rooney got a brace as he continued his good scoring form. But then the international break has halted his momentum and hopefully addressed our fall. If we can get into this one and get a result, maybe we'll be back on track, but it's going to be a really tough test for us, and I'm not sure if we're up for it. If we go to the medical centre quickly, just to give you an injury update, we obviously had a few in the last episode with minor injuries that kept them out. We haven't got that worry today, just Tapia, who's really tired, I think after international duty, he's Peruvian, so yeah, he's been in the first team for them, and unfortunately he's not fit for us as a result. The rest of them are fit, they're just a little bit tired or susceptible to injuries. The only one who's just returned from injury is Sabrino, but he's transfer listed and not near the first team anyway. The other screen, of course, as the head coach, is very important for us to keep strong is the dynamics one. We've got to keep players on side, especially as the director of football is the one who decides whether they come and go. It's a little bit difficult for us sometimes. Alex Mao is the only one with a slight concern, wants to play in a better division, but he's not really good enough for this one. So I think it might have just been because there were offers from the SPL during the window, and in-game it's treated as a better division because it's higher up the tier, even though it's a lower ranking league in terms of reputation. So a little bit strange that one, but the dressing room atmosphere is still good despite a few poor results. The managerial support is excellent, and then the match cohesion is good as well, as the players start to get used to the slightly tweaked tactic we're using this year. So all of that's positive, let's just get into the game and see if we can do the same as we did against Watford, against Sunderland and other sides that are expected to be up there. Blackburn in theory should be harder because they're the team expected to be outright champions. Both teams are in inconsistent form, but I wouldn't really call Blackburn's inconsistent. That's 10 points from 5 games, 3 wins, a draw and a defeat isn't particularly bad. But we'll see what happens. We're slight favourites. We're almost selling out the ground. It's a really positive time for Barnsley at the moment. I can see one of the players they've got doubtful is David Zabacosta, which shows the difference in quality and wage structure at the two clubs. So let's look at the 11 for today. I apologise again if there's any odd jump cuts during the matches. I've got the sore throat back and the voice just goes from time to time. So you might see the odd little jump during the game. But hopefully that won't be the case and we'll hold on. We've got Lumley in goal today. Colin and Taylor are the fullbacks with Lindsay and Burton in the middle. Burton a little bit tired from his England under 21 international duty. But hopefully he'll survive the match. We've got Scully in the holding role for the injured Tapia. Who's too tired to play in this one. Then Benneker and Goodwin in the middle, Edwards and Coleman on the wings, and the informed Jack Rooney up front. 
Both on six goals, Coleman and Rooney. So plenty of goals in attacking areas. We're just not keeping as many clean sheets this season, ironically. It's a shame, to be honest, if we'd still had Steve Cook at centre-half, keeping clean sheets for us and scoring six or seven goals from defence, we'd probably be right up there and a few points clear. But as it is, we're just trying to hang on today. So let's get into the match and see if we can get a result against the promotion favourites. Similar formation for Blackburn, they're just playing a number 10 instead of an anchor man, so a little more attacking intent, but don't forget this season we've got Scully coming and getting the ball off the keeper and starting attacks as a deep line playmaker. Normally it's Tapia of course, but today we've got to make do with the backup option. Hopefully it won't affect us too much. We've encouraged the lads and they seem motivated. Well, at least a few of them do. The rest of them are just keen. It's Rooney with the kickoff. He finds Scully back to Lindsay. I don't think we ever get a chance from this first highlight. It normally just disappears as soon as it gets one back. So Goodwin gets the ball inside to Coman. I take it back this time as he has a shot from 25 yards. But it's just wide at a far post. Had a lovely bit of end on it though. A rush clearance by the Blackburn keeper. It's gone through long though. From the centre half, the striker's beaten two men. But it was straight at him and he easy to deal with. Thankfully, it remains nil-nil after five minutes, but Blackburn have had the best chance of the match so far. They've got the ball on the right-hand side. He's come back out from the corner. Burton heads away, but only as far as Southam. Out to Konza, the centre-half on the left. Taylor flicks it away, only as far as Pasalic. What a save by Lumley to tip it behind. Looked like he deflected that the wrong way, but nevertheless, he kept it out, which is the main thing. Masonda with the delivery, an outswinger to Konza at the back post. Coman clears it long, and Rooney's going to get on the end of it. The highlight ends, though, as he has no attacking support. Taylor wins the ball back in the defensive area. He gets it to Rooney on halfway. Now Benneker out to Edwards. He's charging at the Blackburn defence. Shoots just over the bar. Great effort though and with 10 minutes gone it remains goalless. Burton with a free kick. Hits the wall and it's back to him. The highlight ends though and I don't really see the point of seeing that one. Taylor gets the long throw in. Coleman flicks it back to Goodwin. Edge of the box. Shoots. Deflects onto the post and then the keeper. Brilliant effort. We've got another highlight, but we've got to close someone down. And now we're back in the action with Benica. Tries to flick it out to the left, but it was a poor ball. Masonda wins it back and goes long over the top. Straight at Lindsay, though. The skipper deals with it well and finds Taylor. He goes inside to Scully, the playmaker. Now Benica. He's got two men out on the right-hand side. Finds Colin, the fullback. Edwards should be overlapping, but isn't. He finds Goodwin, though. Shoots from the edge. Good save by the Blackburn keeper. And he's yet another corner for us. We've got it from the left-hand side. Coleman's going to swing it in with a right foot. Headed away by Concer. It was a poor delivery. Edwards gets to it though. Gets to the byline and crosses. But the highlight ends at the most inopportune time. The ball in from Colin. Burton's there. It deflects away. Rooney with the cross. Deflects and is booted clear by Blackburn. They're holding on for dear life now. 20 gone. It's Colin on the right. Long throw to no one. Finds Gomez, the Blackburn centre half. Out to Aaron's at left back. He's going to get to the byline here. Edwards closing down but doesn't do enough. Just forces him back to Pina. And now to Southam again in the middle. Finds Gomez. Gomez goes long out to the left hand side to Aaron's. They're keeping the ball well now and starting to dominate possession. They go back to Pina again. He finds Southam. Southam. It goes back to Gomez. They're just intent to keep the ball. They're not worried about going forward at any speed. They just want to keep the possession. He's straight at Lumley though and thankfully he deals with that comfortably. And with a quarter of the game gone, it remains nil-nil. We're going to pause it for a couple of little tactical tweaks and then we'll be back in a second with more action. Nearly half an hour gone is Charlie Taylor with a free kick. I tell you what, it's been a fairly high quality game with a few chances. So to be fair, it does seem like a first v second match. And we are competing well with the side expected to win the league. So we've got to take that as a positive, And hopefully for the rest of this season, we can continue to perform at this level. Edwards is charging into Goodwin. Shoots from the edge, but it's deflected. And now Masonda can counter for Blackburn. It's end-to-end -end stuff by two good sides. But Scully does his job there. The holding midfielder with a good tackle to win back possession. We're Back for another Blackburn highlight though. Just a minute later. Masonda finds the striker. Deflects away. Colin gets there first. And he's cleared away for a throw in. But it is an absolutely brilliant match of football. Loads of highlights. Loads of attacks. And two good defences just snuffing each other out. Back to the Blackburn keeper who clears it to the left. They've beaten the press there very well. And now they're charging through the defence on the left hand side. Beats a man. Finds Masonda. Good goal into the far corner. Lumley possibly could have got there. But we've been beaten by a counter attack at last. 
past. It's been a fairly even game, but you can see from the shots to on target ratio that Blackburn have been far more clinical. Burton's got the ball from the kickoff at centre half, long over the top, straight to Aaron's. That's absolutely terrible. Pasalic in the middle. We don't want to concede two in a row. Out to Masonda on the right hand side, the scorer. Goes for a cross to the back post, and to be honest, the left winger should have been running in to get that. It would have been an easy finish. It's still 1 0 though, but Blackburn have another corner. Burton heads it away. Still 10 minutes to go to the break, and we're starting to look like we're on the ropes now. Gomez finds Konza. Back to Gomez again. He's going back to halfway to Aaron's. They just start the attack from scratch. It's straight to Charlie Taylor though, and now Coleman can counter. Can we win from a counter-attack? Rooney into the box, but it's straight at the keeper. It's a poor finish, and a man in good form you'd expect to do better than that. Coleman with an in-swinging delivery. He's just put it straight out for a goal kick. That's absolutely atrocious. I don't know why we've seen that, but it's absolutely awful, and I think he might be coming off today. Goodwin on the edge of the box goes for a shot. It's wayward, and it's wide for a goal kick. A few minutes to the break, and we don't really look like scoring, to be honest. Edwards loses out in the air. Pasalic finds Aarons. He goes back to Gomez. You can see Blackburn are probably just the better side, and you can see why they're favourites for the title. When you compare it to the likes of Sunderland and Watford who were second and fourth favourites you can see why these lot are better Rooney's got the ball on the left hand side beats the centre half there's three coming into the box Edwards is one hits the post it's back out to him and he puts it in at the second attempt on the stroke of half time we equalise and we succeed with a counter attack Brilliant play by Rooney on the left wing, and he's got the ball into Edwards, who scores. No idea why Rooney's rating still six and a half, and we've got a penalty now. Coleman's going to take it. I didn't have time to look to change. He scored one recently and missed in a shootout before two. Here he steps up, puts it in the corner. What a turnaround at the end of the first half. Two goals in three minutes, and we complete stoppage time with a second goal, and we lead the promotion favourites. We lead the second place side in the league, who, as it stands, all drop down to third. A brilliant turnaround, probably not deserved, but we have hit form at the best time in the half. Let's go and talk to the lads then. After that brilliant couple of minutes, Winkler still wants us to tell him to prove a point. We're going to do exactly that. Prove you're the better side of these and let's prove that you've got the title credentials for the season. We're happy with the top six place, but if we can get a little bit of a gap, it allows us to have a bad run and still be up there. That's probably the most important bit to this start of the season, is although that we've closed the gap sort of to second and third with a couple of defeats, we've got a big gap down to seventh. Although Blackburn are in now, great save Lumley. Colin puts it behind. We'll look after the corner at the league table. We've had three clear-cut chances now. We obviously missed one with Rooney, who put it straight at the keeper. Lindsay heads the corner away, though, brilliantly. Conta reserves possession for Gomez. He finds Southern. Southern to Gomez. Southern again. What what a long lot of highlights this has been. We've already been going in this match for nearly 10 minutes and we've still only got to the 47th minute. This is a bit strange. Masonda's fouled. It's a silly one from Taylor and with five minutes gone in the second half, it's 2-1 to Barnsley still. We're on 34 points if we win this game. Bristol City in seventh are on 23. I'm not sure what they're doing at the minute. They're winning at Luton. So hopefully Luton can do us a favour and get a result. Even though I'm managing Barnsley at the moment, I'm still a Luton fan. Hughes crosses the ball in for Black Burn. They've started this second half on the front foot, had a few highlights and we haven't seen anything yet. Another shot by the left winger, hits the post, the rebound's in, twice in a game, who would have thought it? Lumley did brilliantly to die for the first one, but the second one he just wasn't getting there in time. It's Colin with a long throw though, Rooney loses out in the air, it falls for Goodwin, he finds Colin again, there's four in the box, Edwards is one of them, straight at the keeper, Bakari does well to save. An hour gone, it's on level terms, but what a wonderful game of football between two good sides. Watford are taking advantage against easier opposition, as Lumley makes a good save from the free kick, and Charlie Taylor clears away. He's had a really poor game, Charlie Taylor, so he might be the first man to come off. Goodwin finds Benneker, we're on the front foot with Colin. He's challenged to Edwards, hits the post again! Rooney's lost out the second time, and the ball's cleared away as my voice goes. A quarter of the game to go, we'll just look at this highlight, and then we'll make the change. Taylor brings it down at left back. Can he redeem himself before he's hooked off? He goes to Goodwin. Goodwin's got a chance down the left to find Coleman. Coleman inside. There's two men there. Finds Rooney. Turns. Hits it. Bakari tips it wide. Good save by the keeper. But another excellent move from us. It's Coleman with an in-swinging corner. To the back post. Consa wins the header easily. Scully will try and regain possession. But he's been challenged and it's out for a Barnsley throw. The highlight ends there. So we go in to make some substitutes. Charlie Taylor's had a 
a poor game. Adam Lewis started the season. We're at home. We can put a winger on and see if he can attack. Benneker's not had the best game. Yannick Stark back in as a Carrillero. We like that. That's how we started the season again. And Goodwin's not had a great game, but I don't think we want to change him yet. I might save the last sub for now and then give Woodrow 10 minutes as a target man if we start to do well on the front foot. Let's scroll down in a minute and have a look at the Watford result as we've got to throw in from the left. It falls as far as Goodwin, but he's lost out and now they're bringing it away with Masunda. He's coming over the halfway line on the right. Oh, the defence has been split. That's terrible. But luckily the shot deflects straight into Lumley's arms. And with 15 minutes to go, it remains 2-2. I can't see where Watford are playing. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe they won earlier on, I don't know. But we've got to focus on ourselves. With five minutes to go, can we hold on and maybe even go to nick a winner? Southern gets the ball. It's Blackburn who have had the better of this second half, though. Masonda's put the striker in. We've unmarked again. Good save, Lumley. Rebound by Burton. Brilliant work. And we're going to make a sub now. Woodrow's coming on for Rooney. Not so much for the attacking intent. More so we've got a bigger man. He's going to go as a target man on attack. He can hold the ball up and he can defend from set pieces as well. So let's see what happens as the ball comes in. Masonda in huge wins it but it was a handball and luckily we've got a free kick just a few minutes to go and let's see if we can get a result as we demand more from the lads hopefully that'll sharpen their focus for stoppage time and it has indeed with just four minutes to go Big news, Luton have turned it around against Bristol City and Lewis has forced a great save from a free kick. Their keeper's been booked, I presume, for time wasting. What is the score? Luton are 2-1 up and now we've got a gap down to 22 points. So even with a draw in this game, we're still 10 points clear. Lewis puts it in. Lindsay couldn't get on the end of it. It was the last chance. The final whistle will go any second. It was a wonderful game of football between two brilliant sides and I'm starting to feel a bit more confident that we could be up there towards the end of the season now. That was an exceptional performance, an end-to-end -end game, and I really enjoyed watching it, which is probably why the commentary wasn't as good, but hopefully you enjoyed watching the game as well. Let's go and see what's been said about it. We're just going to encourage the lads. They were unlucky. They did really well against the promotion favourites, and they're really competing at the top level. We've got the likes of Goodwin and Burton, youngsters who are only going to improve during the season. Hopefully the lone ones like Edwards and Rooney will too, and if that continues to happen with the experienced players alongside, we could be real promotion contenders come the end of the year. At the very worst, it looks a shoe in for a playoff place. We'll have to have an awful run to fall down the league that badly. Taylor's close to triggering a clause. We lost top spot, but we played the best team in the league and drew a really decent performance. Burton's jaded and can do with a rest, but we've got a midweek game first, so we're not going to do that just yet. After these three games this week, we've got a full week break and we'll give him a three or four day rest from training. So let's quickly go and look at the schedule for when we'll next be back and then we'll go and finish on the league table so we can see how we're doing at the moment and how the gaps stand to 3rd, 7th and the relegation zone at the moment. We've still got to focus on finishing in the top half. That's the objective this year, but we'd really like a top 6 place as well. We've got a couple of derbies coming up, the likes of Sheffield Wednesday and Leeds, Rotherham as well, but then some big games towards the end of November and start of December. The last game of November is against Leicester. They were in the playoffs last year how are they doing this season they're in 13th after a poor start so it might be a good test by then Sheffield United were up there last year they're in 20th at the moment but that's the Yorkshire derby and then West Brom in the middle of the month they're sixth so that's going to be the game West Brom away from home on the 14th of December we will see you again for that one if we go to finish on the competition screen we're just off the top spot due to that draw and the fact Watford obviously won their game but we've got a 10 point gap to seventh now and in our next game against West Brom in sixth place will be a crucial one as we look to cement a playoff guarantee. But that will be all for this episode. If you did enjoy it, please put a thumbs up on the video. I really do appreciate your continued support with the series. Let me know down in the comments if you thought that was as good a game as I did. It just looked like an end-to-end -end match between two great attacking sides and I really hope that bodes well for the rest of the year. And who do you think will finish higher in the league? Us or the favourites Blackburn? Subscribe to the channel for daily FM19 content from my two long-term stories. This one, the head coach, where we're currently with Barnsley, of course. We're certainly not looking to move on at the moment, as we're doing a fantastic job and having a great time. But with us overachieving, it could be that a big offer's just around the corner and we may get tempted away. Don't forget we have to be realistic in this save. If a Premier League club comes in with three times the amount of money, we have to accept it as we would in real life. 
There's also my other series, Part of the Furniture with Torquay United. We've just finished Season 6 in that one. So Season 7 of that series will start tomorrow. And I hope you'll join me for it, as it's one of the most important episodes in the series so far. The start of the season's always the best time, and I hope you'll enjoy the episode as much as I enjoyed making it. There's also weekly content for my FIFA 19 lower league career with Crew Alexandra. But a massive thanks for watching this one and continuing to follow the series as always. And we'll see you next time for another big top of the table clash. Thank you.